Prince Harry summoned to see Queen after delivering enormous slap in face to royals. Prince Harry was summoned to see the Queen following his enormous slap in the face to the royal family on announcing his departure. Harry and Meghan Markle remain a part of public life and discussion despite leaving the royal family over a year ago. While the pair spent most of 2020 in relative obscurity, this year has seen them feature in a string of interviews and publicity events. The most controversial appearance came in March when they sat down with U.S. talk show host Oprah Winfrey, and accused the firm of failing to address Meghan's mental health struggles while also making allegations of racism by family members over their firstborn, claims the palace said it took very seriously and vowed to investigate privately. Harry has since spoken in a podcast and during the first episode of his and win for his new Apple TV Plus series, The May You Can't See, about his struggles with mental health, appearing to lay the blame on senior royals like the Queen, Prince Philip and his father, Prince Charles. Earlier this month, the pair welcomed their first daughter and second child into the world, Lilibet Diana Mountbatten-Windsor. Her first name is a nod to the Queen who as a child was fondly called Lilibet by close members of her family. Despite the touching tribute, royal insiders have previously suggested Harry's fallout with his family was enough to damage relations beyond repair. Duncan Larkham, author of, Prince Harry, The Inside Story, went as far as to claim that Harry's actions were akin to physical pain for the royal family. Speaking to ABC's documentary, Royal Divide, Harry, Meghan and the Crown, Shortly after the Megxit announcement, he said, for Prince Harry to make the decision to say, I'm stepping back, I don't want to be a royal, that is an enormous slap in the face for the royal family as an institution itself. So, Harry was, if you like, summoned to see the boss of the family. This meeting took place at Sandringham and was attended by Harry, the Queen, Charles, and Prince William. It lasted for two hours, with royal author Omid Scobie also speaking during the documentary, suggesting Harry went into the discussions hoping to see his grandmother who always had a soft spot for him. Issues including security, residence, royal titles, and income are all thought to have been discussed. In what was largely considered an unprecedented move, the Queen released a statement shortly after the summit which read, although we would have preferred them to remain full-time working members of the royal family. We respect and understand their wish to live a more independent life as a family while remaining a valued part of my family. Harry and Meghan have made clear that they do not want to be reliant on public funds in their new lives. It has therefore been agreed that there will be a period of transition in which the Sussexes will spend time in Canada and the UK. The pair were initially supposed to split their time between the UK and Canada but it soon became clear that would not be the case. A short while after, Meghan and Harry moved to the U.S. and settled in Meghan's native California, where they now reside in the gated community of Montecito. They went on to secure several multi-million contracts with Netflix, pound 109 million, and Spotify, pound 39 million, to produce original content. Alongside this, Harry was also appointed to two roles in the U.S. technology hub of Silicon Valley. At Better Up a mental health professional coaching, counseling, and mentorship company, he holds the role of chief impact officer. The Aspen Institute appointed him to its new commission on information disorder, helping to combat what he described as an avalanche of misinformation. Meghan has embarked on her own private endeavors. Last week she published her first children's book The Bench with Penguin Random House. It received mixed reviews described as awful by the Irish Times, while the New Statesman said, it is mind-boggling how bad this book is, although the Evening Standard said it was, soothing and loving. Meanwhile, after the birth of Lilibet, friends of the couple suggested the newborn was introduced to the Queen via a video call. Yet, palace insiders immediately denied that any such meeting had taken place. It is another dramatic turn of events for the royal family as the Queen is now willing to depart from her family's entrenched policy of never complain, never explain, according to the Mail on Sunday.
and loving. Meanwhile, after the birth of Lilibet, friends of the couple suggested the newborn was introduced to the queen via a video call. Yet, palace insiders immediately denied that any such meeting had taken place. It is another dramatic turn of events for the royal family as the queen is now willing to depart from her family's entrenched policy of never complain, never explain, according to the Mail on Sunday.